So the EU has also brought forward forward-thinking policy protecting our precious seas and beaches, the EU Bathing Water Directive, which obliged member states to change the way they treated sewage, has paved the way for a big improvement in the state of our beaches. Perhaps about beaches is a terribly, terribly sort of right on um, topic in these Oxford, if you haven't got any beaches, <laughs> we'll have to change this. But I'm sure you like to go to the seaside on your holidays. Uh, it's, it's, it's one thing about living in Brussels that I really miss, because Brighton is my hometown. One thing I really miss is the beaches. I can't go and look at the sea. So it's a long way. So th those are just two examples. Um, you know, and that bathing water directive, it's, it's made beaches cleaner, more likely to attract tourists. They provided a haven and a habitat for, 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 for birds, and they've boosted local economies. And that's just a snapshot of some of the environmental protection the EU has afforded to us all. So over the years, um, those legislations have often been opposed by the British government. And Conservative MEPs continue to try and uh, undermine climate change um, proposals. Um, but the EU, again, is, uh, is a force for good. I think, in this regard, um, and is forcing um, the member states to take it seriously and to renew and redouble its efforts. And that's in the face of intense lobbying by the polluting industry. Um, despite that, we've, we've done some really good legislation. Just this year, we've, um, thanks in no small part to Green leadership, Green Party leadership on the issue, we saw a huge breakthrough in the fight to protect our oceans um, from biodiversity loss, from, from, from overfishing. Um, and I have um, been part of that campaign, um, which has been spearheaded by um, a, a, a Swedish Green. No, she's not Swedish. Where did she come from? Yeah, it's maybe Sweden. Yeah, yes, she is Swedish. Isabella Lovin. Um, and so I'm working alongside Greens and campaigners to improve air quality standards to hold the British government to account um, for its re repeated failures to protect its citizens. And I'm proud to be one of the many elected Greens who have stood shoulder to shoulder with the people of Balkan who are fighting at the front line. But of course, it's not only the environment that um, the EU has had a positive impact on. Laws from Europe have established rights for workers, like an entitlement to paid holidays, health and safety protection, equal treatment for part-time workers, protection when businesses are sold off, and a voice in the workplace. And it's green, and it's greens, all too often greens alone, who are standing by the 26 million young people in Europe who are currently unemployed. And it's Greens like my fellow uh, MEP Jean Lambert from London who have been working on proposals to ensure that the most vulnerable Europeans aren't left behind as austerity bites the continent. It's Greens <laughs> who are on the side of the workers whose pay has dropped over the last decade, but their bills, uh, the cost of food and the rail fares, are soaring just today, which gets another 9% on energy prices. Yet this is not mirrored by uh, wage increases. Um, and it's all very well for David Cameron saying, oh, we'll change your supplier, but I don't think, I don't think that's really thought through. So in Brussels, it's green MPs who are really standing up for people's rights at work, voting to protect holiday pay and for equal treatment for part-time workers, voting to ensure that every worker across the continent has the absolute right to belong to a trade union. And because the Greens... I've nearly finished. Sorry, I just want to just say, sorry to interrupt you, but just in case anyone's not okay with 
Like, can I just check if there's anyone who's unhappy with photos being taken just for the song from the best one to take? Um, and just, like, just create a safe, safe space for people I want to check in in case there's anyone who's unhappy with that first. I'm uh, from the Oxford Mail. My name is Greg Flash, but just to take photographs of a representative Mr. Taylor. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Cool. Sorry. Okay, That's all right. You just ruined my flap. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get him back into, into my role again. Yeah. Thank you, Sam, yes. Thank you, Sam, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay, don't worry. Um, <laughs> because the Greens are part of the Green EFA group in the Parliament. We've got 50, 59 MEPs, and that means we're, we're the fourth largest group in the Parliament. And that means that what we say does have a real significance. We, are, we, you know, we aren't going to win numerically on every issue we we, we, we want to win on, but what we say does make a difference. And that's what I think Greens actually are, are there to do. They are there to push the boundaries. They are there to actually t to promote the, the policies and the theories that stretch, that take us from where we are to where we want to be, where we need to be. So what we say does make a difference. And, you know, certainly when it comes down to the economic situation, the Greens in Europe are refusing to stand by, while watch, well, uh, stand by and watch, while those in power, and, and many of those who wish to be, blame a crisis in capitalism on the most vulnerable in our society. And it's, it's not enough uh, to blame those people for not working if there are no decent jobs for them. Because we know who's caused the crisis. And we've got ideas to bring about real change starting from Europe. And that's why we're working there to cut bankers' bonuses, to reel in the credit agencies, the credit rating agencies, and to bring about a continent-wide um, Robin Hood tax. In a time of misguided austerity across the continent, because I think that's a political choice the government has made, um, um, the EU continues to provide much needed funding to important projects across the South East, such as the one and a half million pounds of European grant funding that established the LEADER project um, in South Oxfordshire, which has gone towards helping um, support rural communities. It so far has created over 40 jobs, it's safeguarded over 45 more. It's helped over 60 businesses to grow and brought more money into the local economy. And this is one of <coughs> 64 such projects across the UK. Uh, and 14 of those are in the South East. I mean, it's a small, that's, 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 that's a small fry. But actually, this is what I want to see. I want to see more and more support given to the communities who actually need the support and those pockets of deprivation that are there um, and to actually make a social challenge into an opportunity to make it better, not worse. So, I believe that whether it's been ensuring that we have clean air, protecting the rights of workers or regulating the banks, the European Union has been progressive in comparison to Britain. And it's us Greens in the European Parliament who are pushing for further improvements. My core vision for a properly accountable EU is one which sees the defence of human, human rights and the protection of our environment and resources at its heart. I want to see a European Union that works for people and not for big business. The EU is far from perfect, but a UK exit, um, I believe, would risk environmental disasters. Um, the Greens continue to campaign for a more democratic, less corporate driven EU that puts the protection of our environment at its core. When you look at David Cameron, I mean, I would, I would hardly agree what we need in, in Europe is, is radical reform. Actually, you look at the things that David Cameron wants to reform. Um, you know, workers' rights, environmental protection, um, you name it. The things, all the things that we think are good, 
he actually wants to dilute. Um, so we have to we have to carry the message uh, far and wide, loud and proud, and that's just what I'll be doing um, in this European campaign because it's important. I mean, we won't have a referendum on May the twenty second, uh, two thousand and fourteen. We'll have an election, and that is the chance for us to talk <coughs> to the electorate and to put our case and say this is what we feel is. And this is, you know, and to answer the questions they have. And, and that's precisely what uh, elected representatives should do. They should be there to answer questions. And with that, on that bombshell, have you got any questions? <laughs>